Greetings all, I am Anime Otaku Drew. Now, I know it's been quite a while since I did my last Bad Batch theory, that one being with the idea that Omega is not a clone, but is rather a test tube baby produced by the Kaminoans between a clone and a Jedi. And since then, the newer episodes seem to have revealed that might have missed Mark on that one a bit. But I did have a lot of fun doing it. And I still think it was an interesting theory. And I would point out that there are still a lot of people thinking that there's more to the enigma that is Omega than meets the eye. So, if you haven't already watched the theory, then please do go ahead and check it out right up there as well as my last theory about the rematch of the century that we're supposed to see in the Kenobi series but this time I'm here to take a look at the Bad Batch again and to try and make sense of something I've seen some people wondering about just what are the motives of the Kaminoans you see it becomes clear early on in the series that the Empire is losing interest in the cloning program to produce new soldiers and the Kaminoans are clearly less than thrilled about this. We've seen that Lama Su is willing to do whatever it takes to get Omega or more specifically her genetic material. More on that in the next theory video. And that is in order to start a new and more advanced line of clone to entice the Empire into continuing business with them. But why? I don't mean why Omega, or anything like that. I mean, why are the Kaminoans so worried about keeping the Empire as a client? Now, I can already hear the keyboards clacking away as all five of you who bother to watch this start typing, Duh! It's because they need money from the Empire to keep going. Is it, though? Think about this. Really think about it. The Clone Army was just commissioned about 13 to 14 years before the time we're seeing in the Bad Batch. But the Kaminoans have been cloners by trade for generations. They were doing just fine before the Republic came along with this massive order for a clone army via Master Sifo-Dyas. So, shouldn't they be able to continue without the Empire's business? Well, if we look into economics, we might get an answer. You see, in the field of economics, there is a principle called economic dependency. For all you entrepreneurs out there thinking about starting your own business someday, listen close, as this is something which you'll definitely want to take note of. Economic dependence is when a business has become so reliant on the business of a single customer that the loss of that customer's business may threaten your entire operation. In short, this client provides most or all of your business revenue. So upon losing that client, your business is unable to sustain itself. This is a very bad thing for a business. And it's entirely possible that the Kaminoans have allowed themselves to end up in a state of economic dependence with the continuing order for the re Republic, or now the Empire. Upon receiving the order for the clone army, I'm sure the Kaminoans were ecstatic. This was likely the largest single order they had ever gotten, and would thus provide the largest paycheck they ever got. Because that money is a good thing. 
even better is the information that it would be an ongoing contract. But the creation and maintenance of the Grand Army of the Republic became their primary focus. From everything we've seen, it appears to have taken over most, if not all, of the Kaminoans' resources and facilities, at least the ones that are in operation. I could even imagine that they've had to turn away other clients because they didn't have the resources to fill other orders while still working on the GAR. And then the Republic falls and the Empire rises from its ashes like some great phoenix of the dark side. A dark phoenix, perhaps? No. That never works in film. The Clone Wars are over. Initially, the Kaminoans would still feel secure as the Empire would undoubtedly need more soldiers to maintain order through and beyond this transitional period. But then, they hear the Imperials talking about conscription taking the place of cloning. Meaning that this customer on which the Kaminoans have come to rely is considering ceasing their contract. That all seems to make sense, right? And if that's the case, I would accept it as I actually think that would be different and interesting for something in Star Wars. I mean, you look at the rest of Star Wars and everything is about the will of the Force or the machinations of the Sith or some other grand, large-scale motivation. <clears throat> so, simple motive of economic self-preservation for a faction within Star Wars would actually be something realistic and comfortably in the middle ground. It's not an altruistic cause by any means, but it's not an evil cause. It's something nice and comfortably in the middle. They just want to sustain their business. That's it. But the Kaminoans have a long legacy as cloners. They are undisputedly the best. And they are well aware of that fact. <clears throat> sure, they might have to tighten their belts for a little while. But customers will come back and the Kaminoans themselves will undoubtedly bounce back from this. So it really doesn't add up for it to be something as simple as economic dependence. And the fact that the only thing they're worried about is something that simple is the main reason I don't think that's what's going on. Nothing is ever that simple in Star Wars. Even if that would be something believable. It just, it's never that simple. Not in Star Wars. So if it's not just their economic dependence that the Kaminoans are worried about, why is it so essential that the Kaminoans keep the Empire as their client? Because of the Jedi. Yep, I'm sure that sounds confusing, but let me explain. You see, the Jedi were the benevolent protectors of the Republic for a thousand generations. Something of which the Kaminoans would certainly be aware. For all those thousands upon thousands of years, the Jedi were beyond suspicion and did everything they could to uphold the Republic. But suddenly... They're the enemy who was trying so hard to destabilize and tear down the Republic and murder the Chancellor. What? Really? It just all seems so strangely convenient that the Jedi get routed and the Republic goes away. Welcome to the Empire! And the Kaminoans are definitely smart enough 
to put it all together. Sure, they probably don't know the details of Palpatine being a Sith Lord who was seeking revenge on the Jedi and is a power-hungry megalomaniac that just wants to be the eternal controller of everything. <clears throat> but they've got to be seeing that something is going on because just of the simple convenience of Jedi are betrayers and traitors. We kill the Jedi. Republic goes away. The Jedi were no longer useful and could pose a threat to the new Emperor. So, they were destroyed. Now, if we consider just how smart the Kaminoans and Lama Su in particular are, we can extrapolate from that and figure out that from Lama Su's perspective, the Kaminoans may be at risk of a similar destruction. But Drew, just because they're not useful anymore doesn't mean the Empire would waste the resources to destroy them. The Jedi were destroyed because they were a threat. And the Kaminoans would also be a threat to the Empire. Let's look at a hypothetical universe where the Empire ends their contract with the Kaminoans, but doesn't choose to eradicate them. <clears throat> the Kaminoans are having a rough time of it because their economic dependence on the Empire has been abruptly ended with nothing to make up for the loss of revenue. Meanwhile, factions within the Empire are growing tired of the em Empire's oppression, just like happens in the actual timeline. <clears throat> Over time, those dissatisfied with how this new regime is running the galaxy will start to band together, possibly even form some kind of rebel alliance in an effort to eliminate the Empire, maybe even trying to restore the Republic. But they're weak, just as in the main timeline. <clears throat> But in this hypothetical universe, these people remember the Clone Wars and how the Kaminoans had produced an army to fight for the Republic at that time. So representatives of this alliance to restore the Republic travel to Kamino, where the Kaminoans are just barely hanging on, probably with a few small clients after losing the biggest contract they have ever had, because of their hardship and with a promise from the Alliance that the contract would be maintained in perpetuity even after the Empire is squarely defeated, the Kaminoans agree to produce an army for the Alliance, likely with clones even more advanced than were produced for the Republic and probably paid in secret from the treasuries of anti-empire worlds and likely even wealthy individuals who stand against the empire. The Alliance bides their time, probably not even starting any direct conflict until the clones are ready. Until there's enough clones ready <clears throat> to launch a proper attack. Now, this is where things get significantly different from the main timeline. Because far from the ragtag and scattered rebels we see in the rebel series, in the real timeline, in the canon timeline, within 10 to 15 years, this, this rebel alliance is organized and has a sizable clone army. It wouldn't be an easy conflict by any means, but it would have been quicker than what we saw in the canon timeline, with an alliance victory very likely occurring 
even before the point when A New Hope happened in the canon timeline. So, I mean, Alderaan probably never would have been destroyed because it wouldn't have gotten to the zero point, the, to the Battle of Yavin, before the Empire was put down, meaning the Death Star was never finished. Even if the, even if the Empire expedited the construction of the Death Star, found some way to speed it up, which, with such a massive undertaking, it's unlikely that it could be sped up much. They might, maybe, have been able to knock a year off of it at the most. But, I mean, it's, I don't think that would have been enough if the Alliance had a full and proper clone army, especially if those clones were significantly advanced above the clones we saw in the Clone Wars. I mean, think of a full clone army of the Bad Batch. No, it, I, I don't think the Empire would have been around long enough to complete the Death Star. So, the Kaminoans absolutely are a threat to the Empire, as they could be hired by enemies of the Empire to create an army which could then be used to fight Imperial rule. Lama Su certainly understands this, and that is why he is so dead set on making sure they remain not only useful, but indispensable to the Empire by providing a better military force than the Empire could find or create by any other means. So, there you have it. Lama Su and the Kaminoans give no shits about the ideology of the Empire, or the Republic, or the Alliance, or any other faction. The Kaminoans care about the Kaminoans. They don't want their people obliterated. That is their reasoning. That's why it is so important to them that they maintain the Imperial contract. This is not even about the loss of revenue. It's about the fact that the Cloters of Camino will be eradicated if they are no longer of use to the Empire. And I suspect we may very well see the Empire turn on and wipe out the Kaminoans during the series of the Bad Batch. What do you think? Do you think the Empire is going to decide to wipe out the Kaminoans once they're no longer needed? Will the Kaminoans start an uprising themselves that forces the Empire to eliminate them? Go ahead and share your thoughts in the comments and give me your own theories about why Lama Su is so bent on keeping the Empire as a client. And if you enjoyed this theory, go ahead and drop a like. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button, ring my bell, to make sure you get notified when I upload new videos. The next one I have coming up, which I'm pretty sure I will go ahead and record in this same sitting. I know I said that last time. Or two videos ago, when I did the update, saying that I intended to record the Kenobi theory in the same sitting as the update and it ended up not happening. It was a couple days later and then the editing only just got it up in the last 24 hours or so. But this time I actually intend to. I'm going to transfer this video from the SD card on my camera into the memory of my laptop and then immediately restart my camera so I can record the next video before I even start editing anything. 
so yeah hit that subscribe button and ring my bell so you get notified when those videos and all of them thereafter get put up and that next theory that I'm going to be covering is just why the Bad Batch is going to return to Kamino in the meantime if you want to support the channel then please think about joining my Patreon that I'll link down in the description or check out my Kage Tanuki channel which I will also link to and hit me up with an order for a commissioned fursuit or a custom costume and if you don't have the money to do any of those the like and the subscribe on this channel on Kage Tanuki and on Meitante Otaku Drew and Anime Otaku Drew Gaming all of those will help me out it builds up the channel it'll boost me in the algorithm so more people can see the content I produce either way I really hope you enjoyed the video and that you'll join me again for the next one catch you all later